Welcome to Lecture Online. Whenever you start a science course, especially when you start a physics course, there's a lot of things you need to get familiar with. One of them is the system of units that we use in physics, as well as in all other sciences as well. So this chapter in this, this particular series of videos is going to be on an introduction to physics, sometimes an introduction to general science, because this probably applies to a lot of other sciences as well. So here we're going to start with looking at these standard units, the standard units for length, for mass, and for time. So the international standard, and that's where SI comes from, from Système International, as they say in French, these are the standard units that we use for these particular dimensions, length, mass, and time. Of course, time is not a dimension, mass not a dimension, but at least for these particular measures. And so we use the letter M to represent meter, we use kg for kilograms, and we use the letter S for seconds. Personally, I like to use SEC because it's a little bit more uh, clear when you talk about seconds than if you just plug in an S, but most people say, well, S is fine enough. Well, how does that compare to, for example, the British units, which now in Great Britain they no longer use because they've converted to the international standard units, but in the United States we still use the old British units for length, mass, and time. Now it turns out length is in feet, one foot is 0 0.3048 meters. We, also, we use slugs for mass. Now you don't hear that a lot, but in physics books you will encounter it. And the slug is equal to about 14.59 kilograms. And then for time we also use seconds here. Now where did these units come from? Well initially the meter was devised to be 110 million to distance from the equator to the North Pole. Now, of course, that would be a very difficult distance to measure, but so by definition now, the distance from the equator to the North Pole is 10 million meters, so one meter is defined on that. We no longer use that now. We use a certain number of wavelengths of the emission of a particular um, atom. Now, these particular measures are the basis of all the other measures that we use in science and in physics. Now, in some cases, we need some additional basic measures, such as the basic unit of charge, for example, is the electron, of course, and the basic unit that we use in equations is the Coulomb, and we'll see how we derive those later on. But we can do most things in mechanics by simply knowing length, mass, and time. For example, if we want to define force, we use the Newton. And notice, we, write, we use the letter N to denote Newton, and the Newton is made up of kilograms, mass, and seconds, so the three basic units length, mass, and time then, then appear in the definition of a Newton. Now, the Newton is a force that will give the mass of one kilogram an acceleration of one meter per second squared when that Newton is applied to that mass. So, how, what is the force in the British system? It's called the pound, and the pound is a force that will give a mass of one slug the acceleration of one foot per second squared, and that's where a slug comes in. Now, if you go to the store in most places in the world and you want to buy groceries, they will sell it to you in terms of kilograms. They say, well, I want one kilogram of apples. Then they go ahead and measure one kilogram and give it to you. When you walk into a store in the United States, you don't buy slugs of something. You actually buy pounds of something, which is kind of interesting. So most places in the world, when you buy a quantity in the grocery store, you buy it in terms of the mass of that. When you buy something in the grocery store in the United States, you buy the force by which it's being pulled towards the earth. Kind of interesting, but it works both ways. So, technically speaking, a kilogram, of course, cannot be related to a pound because a kilogram represents mass, a pound represents weight, but for the equivalency, you can say that one kilogram is roughly about, ooh, we shouldn't put one there because it's not, it's roughly about 2.2 pounds. And let's go ahead and put this as 2.2 pounds. So yes, of course, one kilogram is not equal to one pound. One kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pound, 2 .2 pounds. Again, remember that kilogram is mass and pounds is weight, which you cannot really equate. But for the practicality, when you go into a grocery store and you want to buy one kilogram of something, but in the United States, you will order 2.2 pounds of it and you'll get the equivalent of one kilogram anywhere else. So now at least you're introduced to the basic units. Just realize that everything will be defined relative to mass, kilograms, and seconds, at least most things anyway. And so that's where we start on the course to physics. So stay tuned when you want to be introduced to all the other basic principles that you need to know to move on into the world of physics.